So I'm probably going to make a few people mad with this video, but my goal isn't to make you distrust your coach, but to help you better understand how to learn from a coach and avoid certain cult-like behaviors from both students and coaches. So the first thing to understand is no coach has a mastery of knowledge in all positions. Jiu-Jitsu is so vast and there's so many different positions. No matter how long you've been training, you can't have mastered all positions. Furthermore, Jiu-Jitsu is evolving so fast, even if you knew a position well two years ago, it could have evolved so much you're not up to date. So no matter how much a coach is focused on learning, there's always gonna be gaps in their knowledge. Even if you're training with Hodger Gracie or Marcelo Garcia, there's gonna be holes in their knowledge Knowledge. Like Marcelo Garcia didn't play spider guard much, or he probably doesn't crab ride a lot. Hodger Gracie probably doesn't do worm guard stuff. So no matter who you're training with, no matter how skilled they are, there's going to be holes in what they know. No coach, including me, can ever become your ultimate source for your correct answer. So acknowledging this, it's important when you have a coach to understand where the limits of their knowledge is and how you can utilize that to your benefit and help guide the resources you use for your own learning. But way more important than this is that your coach needs to understand where their own limits of knowledge are. And this is where a lot of problems in coaching and learning occurs. The key to being a good coach of technique is not just about having a vast amount of knowledge. In fact, you cannot know a ton of knowledge and still be a great coach but it's about knowing where you don't know and accurately conveying the knowledge that you have that you can give to someone and in the positions that you don't know, being good about guiding people to look for the right resources or helping them with coming to their own conclusions and how to use trial and error to discover the right way through positions that neither one of you may know. All the time I have students or people ask me questions and I'll say, you know what, and I don't actually play that position a lot so I don't have a great answer for you. This is my best guess from what I have seen in that position. But if you want to look more into it, I know that this person or that person are great resources on that topic. So you should definitely look them up. In fact, if I'm in the gym, sometimes I'll even refer to a lower belt if I know they have more experience in a position than me. The belt doesn't really matter. The belt is just a representation of how long you've trained or how well you roll on a macro level. But of course, there's blue belts that play positions I don't play who will have way more knowledge than me in that particular position. And that shouldn't challenge you as a coach. Uh, it shouldn't make you question your coach if you're a student if they don't have knowledge in every position because it's practically impossible for them to have that anyway. So what you're looking for with a good coach isn't necessarily just their knowledge, but their ability to accurately reflect what they do know, share what they do know well, and help guide you in positions that neither one of you know. And the reality is there's so much online content now with YouTube videos, paid courses, seminars everywhere. You can get access to so much information online you should be utilizing all of that and have a great location with a gym that facilitates the learning process by learning from everyone. Remember, if your coach says they don't know a position that well, or they have to talk with another student in the gym to give you a good answer, don't see that as something bad about your coach. In fact, you should see that as a good sign of a good coach. Coaches who don't know a position well, but they try to act like they really know a position well, or they speak way beyond their expertise on a position, often comes from a place of insecurity. It comes from a place where the coach feels like he always needs to have the right answer. And they really shouldn't always have the right answer. They should be able to give you good advice or give you the best guess they have, but they should not be authoritarian with the answers that they give. In my career, I have seen so many coaches or people giving advice be extremely authoritarian with the advice they're giving. And when I'm watching externally, I see the advice they're giving is wrong or won't work well. And I see how frustrating it is for the student. I've had this happen to me in my career a few times as well, where you're trying to do exactly what they showed and you can't get it to work and you're spinning your wheels and and then the reality is in the end, the move they showed literally doesn't work. So that's why it's so frustrating. That's why it won't work. And this can be super demotivating to the point that like some people even quit because they can't get the techniques to work that they're being shown. And it's because an incompetent person is showing them something that really doesn't work. I'm not saying most coaches fall into this, but certainly some do. When you pick a gym 
Often, especially if you're brand new to jujitsu, you don't know anything about the jujitsu community. You don't know about who's a competent competitor, who's a competent coach, really deeply who the person is that you're starting with. So you learn these things over time. So what I'm saying in this video is just try to be aware of competency and where your coach's competency levels are weak and where they are strong and how he reflects those to the students.